Hey guys, I'm Rachel, I'm a hard surface modeling artist, and in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make this sci-fi helmet in Blender. So let's get started. Um, I wanted to start this process off by showing you a bit of Blender's basic sculpting tools, as the way I started this project was using a base sculpt that I made in Blender and then doing a root topology sort of subdivision surface modeling on top of that and then detailing that subdivision surface modeling out even further. Um, so let's get started with uh, the sculpting. So up here, once you have your object you want to sculpt, you go to the sculpting tab up here and you can see that there's a bunch of like different brushes. Um, there's the draw brush, oh, and you press shift F to increase the size or decrease the size. And then you can press F to increase the size of the brush or decrease it. And then you can just draw on the surface right here. And then you can hold control to like invert that brush stroke. So a lot of the brushes that I use uh, commonly are the draw brush, um, the crease brush, which is just a crease brush. It, it just like creates like this line across your mesh. And then also this clay strips brush, which is sort of uh, like a very rough textured brush. And it's really good for, for buildups in like volume of sculpts. There's a lot of other like brushes here, but sometimes I'll use some of them, but those are just the three basic ones that I use. And also the grab brush, which I just toggle with the hotkey G, which is used for like moving the mesh around like this. And those are the, the four primary brushes that I use. So let's go over the settings right here. Um, most of these default settings I'm fine with. I don't usually tinker with the brushes or like most of this advanced stuff. Down here, I always turn on symmetry, uh, usually on the x-axis right here. And then, yeah, that's just symmetry. And then over here, there is an option for Dino Topo. And this is um, a way for Blender sculpting to be a bit more powerful. Uh, it basically creates more geo as you're sculpting. It like calculates geo and like you can zoom in and it'll make more geo and you zoom out and it'll kind of like uh, condense that geo and then you can change like the size right here with this uh, this toggle um, I think going down yeah going down is like more resolution and then going up is less and this is how I usually work is just with Dine Topo. Um, I find it's very, very fast and easy to get like quick, like concept sculpts with this. And then the last setting that I like to use for sculpting in Blender is Remesh. And this will just condense and make like all your topology like similar. So if you have like a lot of fine geo right here and you want everything to be the same size, you have to turn off Dine Topo and then choose like a voxel size that looks good to you. And then you can remesh the entire, the entire thing. That was a bit small. So there we go. And that is, um, yeah, that's just the basics of sculpting in Blender. And with these few tools is how I get the sculpting result that I, that I have in the video. So that's pretty much all you need to know to follow along with the video. And so let's get started with the actual creation of the helmet. All right, guys, here we are with the helmet sculpt. So we are starting off with just an icosphere that I added into the scene. And I'm just going to use the grab brush to pull out a general head shaped, um, just making it a little bit strange and just pulling out certain areas just so that the helmet has some um has an interesting silhouette to it so here all i'm doing is using the crease brush um i'm changing the fall off to sharper which is what i like to do with the crease brush and i'm just gonna drag out like 
the area that I want the visor to be. And then I'm going to start cutting away at some parts of this helmet. So like, I think they're like machined parts that sort of snap together to make this helmet. Here I'm using the inf inflate brush to just make like this sort of tube coming off of the side of the head. It's sort of like a vent. Here I'm just going in with the clay strips brush and I'm trying to define those shapes a little bit more. And just like cutting away and adding geometry. Um, seeing what sort of interesting shapes you can come up with. By just like sculpting some lines. So here's some build up for a sort of nose piece that I really enjoyed. And then here is for the cheeks, I suppose. And then I'm going to add like another sort of vent here, another tube vent with the inflate brush. So I like to think of sculpting. Uh, well, my way of thinking about sculpting is just as a 2D sketch for my 3D model. I'm just using it here for general proportions and just to get an idea down very quickly. The sculpt itself, I think, took only 40 minutes, I think, to make. And it's just kind of like a like a scribble. Uh, so here I'm using the polish, no, the flatten brush just to flatten out that earpiece. But yeah, so we're going to, so this is just sort of like a sketchy drawing. And in the 3D model is where we're going to polish it and add all the little details that make that make a 3D model. You know, so this sculpt is just very rough, very sketchy. It's just meant to find shapes, to find proportions, and that's about it. We're not going to polish it. We're just scribbling. I like using the clay strips brush on like the edges of these of these objects, uh, sort of like uh, like a beveled trim. It kind of like at an angle, if you draw it at an angle, like it looks like a bevel and then it sets you up for the 3D model to make that sort of bevel look good. And uh, the clay strips brush is also just really good at building up volume. Um, you can just you you do, you can just use it and just like press down with and every stroke sort of builds up on top of it itself so it's really good for adding adding uh lots of volume and like building out those shapes really quickly So here I'm just going to give some idea of the kind of details I want to add because this this uh this is quite a small little detail that that brush stroke right there. Um it's just going to give me an idea of the sort of meshes I want to create later in the model. So I thought the the visor was just a bit too uh, much of a just a constant line. So I wanted to break it up with these little uh, pieces that sort of dig into it. I also really like having gaps in between these machined parts because I like to fill it in with sort of with some details, like some pipes or some smaller objects. So you'll see that I'm just going to go around and create some gaps in between these objects. Like right there, I, uh, I'm i giving some kind of idea of the sort of detail I want to fill in with that space.
So we're getting too close to the end of the sculpting. I'm just going to go through and use a remesh modifier, uh, remesh the whole entire sculpt, just so I can smooth out the visor right here. I wouldn't be able to do that without remeshing the mesh first because it was like so low poly. And now I'm just going to go in with the crease brush and see if there's any sort of like paneling lines that work on the visor. Um, I end up not liking these paneling lines and not adding them to the final design. So I'm just defining some of those hard edges a little bit more. And here I'm using the pinch brush, but I'm using it at a very high um, size just to pinch the corner of the visor. And I quite like that shape. I think it, I think it worked pretty well. So here is the end of our sculpting of the helmet. And just like that, we're on to modeling. So I'm going to model the visor first since it takes up a lot of the object and it's a main focal piece. And what I'm thinking about right now is just making sure that the visor is going to be as smooth as possible. And the way we can do that with our model is just by using really big polygons like we are right now. And when we add a subdivision surface modifier to this object, we can just see that those polygons all sort of just mesh together and make a super smooth surface. If you were modeling this with like smaller polygons, then you would have like, you would be like more dependent on the sculpt because then you, there would be like more pinching, if that makes sense, in the subdivision surface. subdivision surface. So I'm trying not to be super dependent on the sculpt. I'm just trying to use it for proportions. That's pretty much it. And so as we're going to go along with our modeling, with our 3D model, you'll see this a lot where I work from just very big polygons to smaller polygons. And if I need detail in a certain uh, area, I'll make the polygons smaller to accommodate for that detail size. But for this like block out, I'm going to use as big of polygons as I, as I can because I want this surface to be very organic and very flowing and very smooth. So here we can see that um, I'm using some loop tool. Uh, loop tools add-on comes with shipped with Blender. It's just a bunch of handy commands, especially for the, I use the relax option a lot and the circle option a lot in this uh, sculpt. So circle will just make a perfect circle with whatever uh, vertices you have selected and then relax will sort of relax that geometry. Although I found, found that the relax operation doesn't work as well as it used to. I'm not sure why that is. But yeah, so here I'm just taking really big polygons and going around the ear of this helmet. I'm not too worried about like those stretchy, stretchy faces. Um, this, this, uh, model isn't going to be used for like anything like a, like a game asset or anything. So it's more for just like concept purposes. Oh yeah, this, that's the relax operation. Um, it works a bit strange, but I like to use space and also circle. So here I'm just making perfect circle, attaching it to that, to the, to the mesh, just like this. And here I'm going to change the gizmo type to be normal space. And then I'm just going to flatten it straight down. And there we have like a, just a perfectly flat plane. So yeah, the rest of this is just going to be, um, quite a bit of just basic reap topology. Um, if you don't know what I'm doing in here, I'm just pressing E and that will pull out your vertexes. E to extrude and it just extrudes your geometry out. Just super basic modeling here, but it's very, very fast. So yeah, you want to try and keep um, sor some sort of uh, flow going in with your sculpt just because it makes it easier for the for when you add the subdivision surface modifier for it to like calculate that geometry 
So you want to you want to have uh, you want to try and figure out just how you want your model to like move and like what shape you want it to be, just to follow that sort of topology. So here I'm using the flattening trick again. Yeah, just flattening the faces down and then rotating them back into position. Yeah, we're not we're not even using like the sculpt base for this modeling portion because we just want to get it looking that certain way. So here I'm modeling out that nose piece. Um, a very interesting uh, sort of shape that I just drew out. All right, so we're getting to the end of this video right here. Um, in the in part two, I will continue with the three D modeling, like subdivision surface modeling. So I'll see you guys there. Thanks for watching.